Slayer with Rain in Blood, 12 tracks, 34 minutes in the expanded edition that's out today. Third studio with the American Thrash Band released October 1986 by Def Jam and Geffen. Produced by the band and Rick Rubin, recorded at Hill City West in California. Uh, despite no singles or radio play, this album was the first from the band to hit the top 100 in the US, peaking at number 94 in the region, as well as 47 in the UK and number 264 in Japan. Uh, the album was certified gold in the US in 1992, and the release of this album was delayed due to the controversy surrounding the track Angel of Death. Go for it. Yeah, this one's regarded as their best or their masterpiece. Kind of like Metallica has their Master of Puppets, this yeah. is kind of Raining Blood's their, the one that everyone sort of goes to. Um, whilst I'd probably put it in the top three, I disagree. Yeah. Um, whilst the bookends are great, Angel of Death and Rain and Blood, that's an awesome way to start and finish albums. I find the album very one dimensional and I did appreciate later albums when they did sort of vary paces and bits and pieces. This one's yeah. very much straight yeah. ahead. So it's not just me that kills a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much straight ahead and um, once you hear two or three songs, you've kind of heard the whole album essentially. You know, you've got to be a really hardcore fan to love it. I do like it. Um, I think they did some better stuff, personally. So, um, for me, the production was obviously took a big step up, and um, you could see that obviously record companies and lights and bits and pieces <laughs> like that, um, they were starting to pour a bit more money into the band and yeah. been around at that point in time. It was sort of getting, obviously they did some charts yep. stuff, which was interesting. Um, but for me, yeah, it's just, Hanging on the aggressive stuff for the sake of hanging on to it, you know, no, you we, mean, we're yeah, a thrash yeah. band, we have to be fast, and I think they all had that mentality back in the day. Um, not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but for me, it was just, yeah, one dimensional. I needed a little bit more. Yep. Um, the remixes on there, I don't think they're necessary, personally. Mm. Oh, there's a couple of tracks, Criminally Insane, and yeah. there's something else. Um, yeah, don't really need to hear a remix. It's either comes out as an album or it doesn't sort of thing. Um, yeah, for me, um, Angel of Death, Criminally Insane, Postmortem and Raining Blood, 8 out of 10. Yep. Cool. Oh, there you go. Um, this is the first Slayer album that I heard um, back in, I know it was released in 86, I heard it in 87. First thing I remember about this album is being shit scared by the cover. Um, <laughs> As a, you know, I grew up in a family where they put the fear of God into you and I saw that cover and I thought, oh fuck, what am I listening to? Um, convinced, Were you converted after that? Uh, yeah, it didn't take long. Um, listening to this, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to get possessed listening to this. Um, but I loved it. I love this album. Uh, it's 30, what is it, 30 something minutes long? Like 34. Yeah. 34 minutes of pure thrash goodness as far as I'm concerned. Um, I remember this used to be my commute to school. Um, I used to catch a bus Catholic and a train. School? Uh, no. no? <laughs> Unsurprisingly, um, the most uncatholic high school you'd ever go to in your life. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Oak Park High School. <laughs> um, no, but I remember I used to have to walk from the train station to work, and I used to get off a couple of, I used to get off a train station earlier just so I can listen to this when it first came out. I remember wow, that. Cool. Um, love it. I actually love this album. Um, Angel of Death is a great starter for an album. Mm. I can see what you're saying in terms of being fast for the sake of being fast. Yeah. Um, but I think this album for me is probably Slayer at one of their peaks. I admit there are some stuff, there is some stuff they do that they did, I think, a little bit better. Mm. Um, but this is a standout for me. I still love it. Um, Jeff Hanneman, he's always been my favourite member of Slayer and his solos on this are fantastic. Mm. I mean, he ended up getting a bit more melodic and everything as we get through the years and everything like this. But in terms of pure thrash and the way his solos were structured, man of the match for me on this one as well. So, yeah, no, rest in peace, Jeff. But um, just a great album. I look, I really couldn't fault it. I can see that some songs probably aren't as strong as other songs, but that doesn't mean they're not as good. It just means that they're... Well, I shouldn't say they're not as good. They probably aren't as good. They, <laughs> they are good, but like I say, it's like you're comparing an A, an a to a B or something like that. So, I mean, I, well, yeah. I, I can It doesn't drop off too much. No. no. Really, it doesn't. So. This is one album that I can listen to from start to finish, and maybe it's because it's a 30-minute length. Um, yeah, you it's know, almost I mean, an EP length of an album they worth did that of material. Right. They did know? that right. Well, shit, I mean, Dream Theater do songs that are bloody almost 30 minutes long. Yeah, you know? yeah so, well, um, um, Good thing Dave isn't here for that. <laughs> Like I say, Angel of Death's probably my standout on here as well. Altar of Sacrifice, I like. I'm just looking at the track listing here. Criminally Insane was one for me as well. Rain in Blood. I mean, shit, mm. is, there a, is there a better thrash metal uh, concert closer than that? Um, probably not. You know, Album, concert, whatever you want to call it, just, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, so, it's a finish, um, you know, it, it ends everything right there. So, so, yeah, like I say, it's one of the high points for me. I'm giving it 9 out of 10. Yep. 
Well, because we're going in different order to what we wrote yeah, them yeah. down as we previous references. But the first thing I noticed on this one is how much bigger this one sounded to their previous yeah, release. Yeah, a bit of money yeah. behind yeah. this one. Yeah. It was a big jump up in production quality. And this time around, everything was locked down nice and tight. The band have nailed the performance aspect here. And the groove they use to break things up is really cool. It's aggressive, but it's done in such a way that it sucks you in. It's really well done. It's great to hear the band on point across the board performance-wise. Yeah. And on previous releases, I wasn't a big fan of the solos. I didn't think the guitar work was all that great for lead guitar work. But this time around, it's much better. It's in your face, but it fits in more. It, mm. it works better in the context. The composition on this one was better uh, as well. Short, sharp punch. It gets to the point right quick, unlike us. And the overall yep. tempo from song to song doesn't change much, but the breaks within the songs are incredibly well done. So it's a 34 minute duration thing where the breather you get is just with the mid song stuff, not yep. from song to yeah. song to song kind of thing. Yeah. It's really intense and I love the swagger this has. This thing swings fucking hard. The lyrics are dark, menacing and angry. They've got less of the satanic sort of conversational things, lyrics in there, but they seem to have, while I've dropped that gimmick, they've gone much more into the more real world storytelling aspect of things. And I reckon that works better for them, for mine. Yep. Because I would just get sick of the satanic stuff nonstop. That's just a, it's a gimmick that is a gimmick for the sake of it. Whereas when they're starting to be observational, they start talking about war and that sort of stuff, it becomes yeah. much yeah. more interesting to me. Production was well done, very, everything is clear. They didn't lose any of the grit though while getting it cleared up, which was good. This has a really visceral sound that's incredibly well balanced. It makes sense and it just captures the raw fury of a band at their peak. Mm. Uh, no tricks needed, but there are some nice panning and little moments to break things up, which yeah, definitely helps. Definitely the solos, you know, yeah. the left yeah. and right. Left and right so, guitar yeah. stuff. And that stops it from being too punishing, which is good. Um, but the fact, that it's being, the fact that it's so clear across the board while it's being so frenetic in the playing is a nod to everyone doing it. And the album craft took a step forward in this one too. I thought, like, it's pretty much a standard pace all the way through, but they know what they're going for and they lock down that really well. But the way the tracks are placed with those mid-song changes in mind was really well thought out. They, it's hard to do that. When, you, when you're playing at a certain pace, BPM for the, for the majority of it, and then you're using the mid-song breaks to sort of give the album some dynamics, not the easiest thing to do, but they did it really well. And it's a cool bit of history that this album fit onto one side of a cassette. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the fun part about going through the details of this. If you like it fast and heavy, you're going to love this. If you don't, then simply stay away. Uh, for me, this is when they hit their stride. Uh, this is a damn fine album that any fan of Thrash simply has to have in their collection. It gets better, too, the more time you spend with it. It grew on me more and more as I spend time with it. This is why I think this album sort of emble is emblemic or whatever is the word I'm looking for. I'm off track tonight. But it symbolises why Slayer fans are notorious for being louder and drunker than Metallica fans because that's what this album is. It's harder and faster than what Metallica were doing yeah. around the same time. It's just straightforward, in your face, and that's what Slayer fans are too. So I got a 9 out of 10. Raining Blood, Angel of Death, Criminally Insane, and Postmortem. Check it out for yourselves. Let us know what you think. Yeah, hey. Hey, we got an applause. Got an applause. There you go. Woohoo! That's it. Everyone, everyone's awake. We should go now while we can. Um, so we should do Among the Living to go counterpoint to that.